everybody. Wow, this is totally using a stage intro at all. Reading, not not sponsored, uh, George T. Simon, the big bands. Not not uh, not staged at all. Just totally, you guys just appeared here. I didn't just, I didn't just set up this webcam and just do this whole stunt. There we go, everybody. This is C. Porter here. Um, back again with a new video, but this video is requested by a fellow YouTuber, an old music YouTuber, Austin Casey. I'll put his comment up here after I did my 400 video, and I've just now gotten around to actually doing anything about it. So, well, uh, the basis of this video is it's supposed to be, well, it's the, it's an old game that's been done for a lot of things for about 20 years now or so. It's called the Desert Island Game, which is where you uh, you do all the things you'd want uh, if you had to live on a desert island for the rest of your life. Well, um, well, it's been done for books, movies, other things like that. Um, and most recently in our community, the questions came up again, but for records. I've decided I will take a crack at it myself. So, uh, usually the rule is about is ten bucks or five bucks or something like that, something around ten or five or whatever. Well, I had originally 50 records of my 380-something collection, um, and I narrowed it down to 15. I refused to go any further than that. So you're going to sit through. Uh, you're going to sit through that. All these records I will use on the desert island. I will use this to uh, teach the whatever native society there is about records now. I got stuff from nearly every decade. And keep in mind all of these uh, all of these records you can find on this channel. I will put a link to them down in the description below. So let's get into it, shall we? It's uh, this one first, the part of the big four hits records, uh, thing out of the out of the 50s, out of Queen Cin Cincinnati, I guess. It's um it's a four and one, basically. Two songs on each side. And it's like, uh, it's Al Runyon and Larry Roberts. Just because I want to have some rock and roll and R&B type stuff and rockabilly, I guess you could say, since I'm pretty sure Al Runyon was a rockabilly artist. And so, um, having his stuff, having his stuff would be good just so I can remember and teach people about what, what it was like, um, what rock and roll and such was life back in the crazier sides of it. And yeah. So then basically it goes on to one of my first choices. There's something about this record that I want to share with everybody that I probably won't have anywhere to share anywhere else. So this one I um this one is one of my first bat wings I ever got. I'm pretty sure it's my first. Uh, this is like uh, back in during 2017 still. I got this. I don't remember how I got it whatsoever. I do not know where it came from, but suddenly one day I was looking through my box of records and was like, I don't remember this. What is this? And so I put it on my Ben Crosley and played it. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm probably playing to everybody's sweetheart right now. It's beautiful to Henry Burside, like Henry Burside with, uh, with Marcia Freer on the other side. It's the beautiful duet, What Will I Do, which is the 24 hit, and then she's everybody's sweetheart. Beautiful, beautiful record. Love it. Love it to death. Couldn't live without it. This next one is, well, uh, the, this is the type of band known as Mickey Mouse Band. This is uh, Sammy Cave, Rosalie on Perfect, which was a hit in 1937, and Why Should I Care on the other side as well. And, well, for two reasons. One, because it's perfect. Uh, you guys know how I spent, like, a ton of time on Perfect, if you remember last year. And also because it's a, a hit, and I just like Sammy Kay in general, even though a lot of people tend to really not like his stuff. I don't know why. Next is, well, you all saw this coming, seeing how I've been, it's been slowly taking over my life. Uh, none other than Will Osborne, of course. Um, I may be dancing with somebody else on Perfect, and uh, on Perfect Blueprint, and 
this and this knife for love. Well, I wanted to, I originally wanted to have like two, at least two Osborne records so I could teach them about both eras of Osborne, but this one will have to do with probably my favorite Osborne side thus far. I may be dancing with somebody else. Here's another one that's like, uh, that was basically popular music. I don't think it was ragtime or anything like that, but it was popular music back in the 19 teens with the Peerless Quartet. Uh, they have, like, this record, both sides of it are bangers. They are both bangers. My Pretty Firefly and Come Back Dixie from 1915. I highly recommend you check those out. This next one is, uh, this next one is just a basic one by Tommy Dorsey. Not a hit as far as I can tell. It's Deed I Do and Yearning. I got this record once, along with like 20 others, in a department store. It's for old retro furniture from the 60s and such that is um, it was for sale, and I noticed that they had a... Uh, okay, I, I'm not even going to try with the model, but it was it was a floor standing Victrola there, and I noticed they had a couple, of, like they had like 20 records in there. All stuff like this and red Columbias and other such things in there. So I decided to uh, see if I could buy them, and I could. Got them all for 10 bucks, including this record here, Yearning and The Idea, which are very good songs on their own. Now, with this group of Islanders, I would, I would want to uh, I want to have not just pop and swing and stuff in, in case they, uh, they didn't like it, as well as I couldn't be able to withstand just those same genres over and over again. So here is here's one a classical side by Marek Weber and his orchestra on a his master's voice and my only his master's voice. It is Count of Luxembourg and the Merry Widow. Now this guy he was actually kind of cool because um okay he hated jazz but um, he knew that he had to survive, and he was German and such, a Jewish German and all that, during, uh, during the Holocaust starting, so he would have, uh, he would step down and let his bandmates, uh, do some hot stuff, and really, really hot jazz, and some of it even got recorded as well. This next one is a rock and roll side, because, the 50, yeah, I mean, you, you can't go without rock and roll when you're going to the 50s and such, and, so I picked out a side that uh, that has like a lot of elements of rock and roll at the time. It's a, a VJ Records, uh, the Alvarados, at my front door, and what's bugging me, baby? Now this record here, I believe the Alvarados was a mixed race band like the Platters or uh, or the Del Vikings, but it uh, has it has a really fast really good hit on one side, but it also has the other type of stuff like uh, borderline duo and other such um, stuff that was going on. Um, the really cheesy, nearly fluff songs that were going on that were being made, like What's Bugging Me Baby, a lot of these were like that, so I could explain that to them. So this is the Jewel record from August 6th, 1945. Written, recorded, released, Atomic did it. At the instrumental by the Malon Clark Sextet. And it's an instrumental that was made just for the sole purpose of, hey, let's get something out here. The war is about to end. Let's let us let us let us get something out here. Let's uh, let's try to capitalize on the word atomic. So they did that and the B side is I'm a dreamer, aren't we all? Some kids doing fireworks outside. And so it's firecracker season down here in Florida. You're just gonna have to bear with that. This next one is Ink Spots, of course. I'm a huge Ink Spots fan. I've always loved them. They've found so many times to just get into my life before where so many of the songs have just been able to define moments in my life. Well, this record here, I've been searching, like, okay, something, something as well about the Ink Spots is I like to, um, naturally, I just want to collect everything in person. I've only broken that rule twice for two records, so 
here is If I Didn't Care and Knock Me Sal from 1939. It's only half, half the reason is because of If I Didn't Care. Um, and the other songs like it, they're just so heavenly, slow ballads like that. The real reason why I'm doing this is because of Knock Me Sal. is an entirely overlooked part of the band's history and music by the majority of Inkspot's fans, or Inkspot's fans today. These people, um, these people don't ever listen to stuff before if I didn't care, or, and they all try to do the whole thing where, like, every song starts the same, the exact same way, you know, those, those types of people. So, this is a, a, a great jiving song that really uh, shows the other side of the band. I've been, I've been trying to do this for two days. They, the firecrackers will not stop, so I'm sorry. You're just going to have to bear with that. This next one is a great one by Benny Goodman and his orchestra. Goody Goody, and it's been so long. The double-sided hit that just great jazz that I would not want to be able to not hear Benny Goodman. I prefer Goodman over Miller, though, anytime. Ah. Yeah, this one, this one, okay. Uh, one of the reasons why I got into 1910s music in general was because of a label I just discovered out of the blue at the time in 2017 called Emerson. Uh, here it is. Um, the be beautiful looking, the beautiful looking label when it usually didn't come like this, but, uh, but the whole reason I got into it is because a 45 and 33 collecting friend of mine had the last name of Emerson, so I would just collect these just to tease him, like, hey, I got one of your records, Joseph, or whatever. And this is Swedish conductor known as C.M. Selling, Kronlegar Kronobars, and Himlinstoner, if I'm saying it right. It's Swedish, I don't know. One of you guys, one of you guys are over there, so you probably know how to say it better than me. This next one is a Harmony record. I, I, am, I wouldn't go anywhere without some of my Dime Store stuff. So, this is a Dime Store Columbia label. Frank Farrell and his Greenwich Village Orchestra. Just Another Day Wasted Waiting For You and, um, and Gorgeous. Some Dime Store hot jazz that I like. I love hot jazz. If you can, if you can't already tell that. This next one is one of the most beautiful songs that I want to take with me. Joe Benucci and his orchestra, Moon Glow. Absolutely beautiful instrumental. And the other side is by Gene Cardos and his orchestra, Zombie. Very fast paced swing record. <clears throat> and lastly, with this society that I'd have around me, living on this other island, I could tell them about the music from where I came from with, uh, with the Miami Society Orchestra. I know it's a pseudo band, but they would never know that. It's on a, it's on a challenge record from, uh, from, I think, 1930 or so. And the flip side is Bob Green's Dance Orchestra. So that's 15 there. I could go my the rest of my life with the 30 songs from that. Uh, actually, no, more like 34, considering there's the other ones. No, 33, something, something around there. 33 songs that I could live off of the best the rest of my life um, on that other island. I know it's not exactly what you guys would be expecting, but well. It happens. So, I don't have too much time left to talk, so I'll make this quick. Record Stories, it's coming, uh, the next one it should probably be out by next month. Whatever else I want to say, I'll put up on screen, because I'm probably forgetting something. This is C. Porter signing off. See you guys around.